Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So the question now becomes with uh, with Donald Trump at Walter Reed and his his ability to lead uncertain. What happens to, well, the business of we the people? What happens to uh, a coronavirus relief bill? What happens? Well, what happens going forward? What happens to the Supreme Court nominee? Uh, especially now that you've got a couple of senators uh, who are now have now tested positive. Here to share some thoughts on what this might look like. I've asked a longtime Washington insider, our good friend Bob Wiener, to come talk with us, president of Wiener and Associates. Bob, thanks for taking time for us. Rick, it's it's a hoax. It's fake news. Trump's really still at the White House. Is That's that what it is? Go for- is that where you're going? Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you. No, I honestly, uh, no. last night, last night when I first heard it, uh, I'm going. I don't know that I buy it. I don't know that I believe. Yeah, it. I know. Not, but what is a hoax is how serious it is. Zeke Manuel was just on Rachel Maddow saying he's got a five to fifteen percent chance of dying, being that he's seventy plus. In, in, in geez, so are some of us. But he's he's in his mid seventies. He's obese. Uh, he's got fever. He's uh, had it all, fever all day. He, uh, the White House has been hoaxing the American people, trying to say, oh, it's modest, it's nothing. Oops, it's moderate. Oops, it's more serious. Oh, he's just going for a couple of days. He's going to be at Walter Reed for, for probably one to two weeks. And uh, if he's like Boris Johnson, he'll degenerate. Boris Johnson lucked out and stopped just short. This thing takes two weeks to get to the bottom and then come back up. Right. J- Boris Johnson stopped. At just at the point of being having to have a generator, which gives you about an 80 to 90 percent chance of dying. Um, and uh, we'll see where Trump lands on this thing. But he's in serious situation now. And um, you can't tell me that Mike Pence hasn't been notified. They didn't tell us until, you know, months later that Pence had been notified when he went to Wall Street the last time. And a friend of mine, Rick, this is some news, who works as liaison to uh, Walter Reed, uh, and, and I won't tell you which department he's in because I don't want to get him up S's Creek, but he told me the doctors there were told that Trump did have a mini stroke. That's why they shot him out and shot him back, and why they gave him the mental test was to see if he was capable of anything. Right. No, nothing surprises me, and, and the amount of lies and deception that have come out of this administration. Uh, you know, the fact that, you know, I my first reaction was, uh, this is a stunt, is uh, I think is the, the logical one. Uh, now, as I said before, I don't wish him any harm. I don't wish him to die. Yeah. But to be honest, as he himself has even said, uh, it's the elderly and people with comorbidities uh, that are going to end up going. And I look at the path that Herman Cain took. Right. Um, that, that was a whole month-long process. That's right. Uh, I mean, this guy has dug his own grave. I mean, your first reaction should be sympathy. But in this case, I want to know, honestly, which of the kind of listeners you have and the friends that I have don't say, we don't want him to die, but we want him to suffer. This is justice for his throwing this hoax and throwing 210,000 now tonight deaths at the American people because he didn't take the steps and, and wouldn't do what the CDC had d- says and wear a mask which protects you the 95%. The, he deserves the pain, not the death. Yeah. No, I, look, I, I want, as I said at the beginning, I want him to, to recover, full speedy recovery, so we can lock him up and, and make him stand trial for his crime. I don't crimes. want full speed. <laughs> I want him to go through the long, torturous recovery. Okay, well, you're a little meaner than I am. I... <laughs> but uh, the problem, Rick, is he's inflicted this on the American people. Think of all your friends and people. I have friends, and you know I run. I'm in Masters Track, and I've got a couple of Masters Track people who got this thing. I've got family who, who was in denial on the need for masks. Not Pat. My wife is a Ph.D., and she's brilliant, but, you know... I won't say who the family members are. Yeah. So, I mean, there are people who bought Trump's as BS, yep. and they've suffered because of it, and suffered mightily, and our schools are suffering, and the one-third of small businesses that aren't reopening are suffering. The 30,000 airline pilots, uh, uh, employees that were fired today and yesterday are suffering. The, the uh, economy as a whole is suffering. So, Rick... It's not just even the health, it's the economy, and I hope we get that message through, because Trump had this little thing that, you know, maybe he was five points up on, on Biden on the economy, but he's down below him on credibility on absolutely everything else. He doesn't even deserve the economy. Nope. And this is one of those weird moments where, you know, uh, you go back to those Woodward tapes, and you know, right. we now know that this was a conscious choice. This wasn't him just right. being a doofus. This wasn't him being, oh, we didn't know. They knew 
they knew explicitly and they chose to ignore it. And this is, you know, it's, you know, as I said earlier, it's almost like poetic justice that this, that he's got it. And look, if someone had to get it, I'd prefer him than anybody else who, who tried to do the right thing, who tried to social distance, who tried to wear the mask, but had to go to work to support right. their family, had to go and, and be around people who are an idiot. No, m- <laughs> are these kind of these these no mask anti mask anti vaxxer nitwits right. who are making all the rest of us uh, less safe and more in danger? That's right. And by the way, let's make a little more news here. Hope Hicks, who gave it to him, let's talk about why Hope Hicks left in the first place and was waved off with a love and kisses uh, friendly goodbye, and suddenly because she had just testified in front of Mueller and told the truth, so she was dangerous. She was a spokesperson who could be telling the truth to to Trump uh, about Trump, and then Trump fired her because she was dangerous to him and gave her freedom so that she wouldn't be a White House employee. But then when Mueller's thing turned into nothing because he became the institutionalist instead of the real prosecutor uh, in, in a lot of the stuff that mattered and didn't bother asking about the finances that Trump had with Russia and didn't bother doing the counterintelligence investigation that we all thought was happening, uh, and nothing really happened out of Mueller other than a horrible, worst I've ever seen kind of testimony where he answered in staccato one-word answers and looked like a, like he was a, afraid of himself. Um, so once that happened, then he brought his good friend and lovely, wonderful woman, and God knows what else he's done with her, back. So that's how Hope Picks got back. Yeah. Uh, and now curious that, you know, she's the one who gave it to him. Uh, right. did Did you find his, his kind of pre-spin to be as interesting as I do is where he tried to blame the military and tried to blame law enforcement because they all, they all love him so much. They just want to want to grab him and kiss him and her. And, uh, you know, do you, do you find that to be a total BS as I do? Absolutely. And three days ago when he's talking about masks hurt you as much as they help you and people touch their faces with them and, and he was putting masks down to right to the point of three days ago. And then he went to this fundraiser and he went to, uh, and exposed everybody else today and yesterday after he knew that he got it from Hope Hicks. Uh, I mean, the, you know, I don't have sympathy for this guy. Well, I don't either. I, yeah. I have none, zero. It no. can't come out of my bones to be sympathetic. I like some Republicans. I have some friends who are. Bill Cohn is a friend, and, and I brought Rob Portman over to the National Press Club, and, you know, and, and some of the – they're honest people, except they're still acolytes of uh, – not Bill Cohn, but most of them, Portman is – still acolytes of Trump. But, you know, at least they're human. And, and, you know, remember what McCain did with thumbs down at the end or thumbs up, whichever way it was that that, that kept the uh, bill alive, the health bill alive. So there are a lot of decent Republicans. That's not the issue. This guy is a fraud, a con man. And when Bloomberg said it four years ago at the Democratic National Convention, uh, people should have listened. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Now, we're, we also find out that at the Rose Garden ceremony where they, they marched out uh, Amy Coney Barrett, Right. Uh, we now find out that five people who attended that have now tested positive that we know of. They're probably going to be more. Um, any chance of, of this? She had it. What's that? She had it. She oh, yeah. Had I, it this summer. I, she had it over the summer, but not at the Rose Garden. Right. Um, any chance of, of uh, slowing that process down of them ramming her her nomination through? That's what Schumer, you know, I'm on Schumer's talk list for talking points. That's what Schumer is trying to do as leader of the Senate. It's what Pelosi wants to do. Lindsey Graham said, we're still on schedule, and he could lose his Senate seat as can Let's about hope. eight others that are really uh, – you know, Tillis, by the way, just announced he has COVID tonight, yep. and he's one of the ones at risk. And uh, I, I think uh, they should slow Barrett down, they, uh, Schumer's point uh, and, and other Democrats' point, but it's all Democrats' point, is that there's never been a hearing of a judge where you didn't do it in person. They're talking about doing it as virtual hearing now. Uh, and uh, I think they're going to do everything. I think they've calculated, Rick. This is the sad part. Yes, they should. Yes, the argument is there to do it, but the merits don't count. They may have calculated that they're going to get so creamed in the elections they might as well do a scorched earth policy and get what they can beforehand, and that includes the judge. Yep. So they're just going to give up a few points more in the election, grab the ninth judge, and uh, and take the hit. I think they may have made that calculation. No, clearly. I mean, I I've been saying that from the from the start. They're going to get their six to three majority, and I hope the Democrats uh, find a spine. Because now all bets are off, rules don't matter anymore, and I hope they do expand the court. I, you know, we, we're down this down this path where yeah. 
Uh, you've got the Republicans who continually and, and look, Democrats have done it, too. Uh, you're, you're breaking you're breaking the norms. Um, you know, now it's you know, now it's uh, gloves are off. Well, they, they should. But I am very distressed. I mean, we're gonna, all going to vote for Biden because you can't have Trump. So if you get a 90 percent improvement, but there are some things. I can't believe Biden is saying, I don't know about packing the court. I'm not going to give you an answer on that. Um, he's being waffly on that. Yeah. And uh, his first answer was, no, I'm not going to do it. Then he moves at least to waffling. So maybe he can be moved to, to abs- actually doing it. I absolutely agree with you that maybe don't go to three, which is a takeover, but go to two extra judges because they stole two. Yep. They stole this one and they stole Obama's pick with Merrick Garland. So no, I, uh, I say you go to, to where you even the court. To where yeah. you actually have to have uh, someone change their 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 vote. You actually have to have a swing vote. Uh, I don't want to so pack it to right the point to where two. now you're you now with two and not three. Is that right? Well, it'll be a, a six to three majority with with Barrett on the court, right? Right. So if you so put three on the court, you're even. If you put four on the court, now you've you've swung the, oh, the so balance. Oh, you do want three. I don't think we're going to get that. I think the best we're going to get, if we get any, is two. And yes, we should. But you know what? Here's the other thing. They can do all they want. If we have the Senate, the House, and the White House, they're going to fix Obamacare. They're going to put the, the, you know, the stuff back in. They're going to fix the, uh, uh, the exchanges. They're going to fix, uh, make sure that Medicaid is put back in. Whatever the court puts down, they're going to do a legislative fix. It'll be first up. And the court has to give time. They can't make everybody with corona, the 209,000 people that died, right, but the 7 million that got it. They can't make all of them pre-existing conditions ineligible for insurance. They just can't do it. Right. Plus the 130,000, and how Trump can say it's not 100,000 people. Yeah, it is 130,000 people. That's the number of people that have pre-existing conditions that are now protected by Obamacare. Now, it'd be million. 130 million, excuse me. Thank you very much. Uh, people. So uh, they can't not allow that. Rick, I remember when I, when I hosted Price and I hosted Waldron. Price, who became HHS secretary, he was a congressman in Waldron when he was chair of the, D, of the Republican campaign. I, I asked, what are you going to do? Because it's always we're going to repeal and replace. What are you going to replace? Okay, so if you replace it, what are you going to do about the children that are, that are dropped? Oh, we'll put that back in. What are you going to do about the pre-existing conditions? Oh, we're going to put that back in. What are you going to do about the seniors? Donut? Oh, we're going to protect the seniors and drug prices and donut hole. Well, by the time you're done... They're doing Obamacare. Exactly. So that's why they've never done a replacement, because it has to be Obamacare. Well, they don't want to put anything on paper, because then you can tear it apart. That's why right. Trump is protecting his secret plan so much. No, it's coming out in two weeks again. Yeah, again. again. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm, again, I'm holding my breath. Again. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, that ain't happening. Now, here's, here's the other thing. Let me, let, let's, let's finish up on this line of thought. Uh, because, you know, now with Trump, there's a potential that... Um, you know, he may be incapacitated for a bit of time, which means right. Pence is going to going to ascend uh, to the presidency. Um, pardon deal. Come again. Pardon deal. <laughs> <laughs> if Pence is president for one second, he's going to strike the deal with Trump to be uh, Trump's going to strike the deal that I get pardoned. He there you go. Pardoned. OK, there, that's, that's interesting. Uh, but, you know, let's say he doesn't come back. Uh, now we we've, we've got a new election with Pence at the top of the ticket. Does that I make this that. any more competitive? Do you think, especially he's if he pulls in someone Trump someone acolyte. like Nikki, someone like Nikki Haley? Uh, he's such a Trump acolyte. Well, you know, and pick Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley for vice. Yeah, that's all possible. But Trump isn't going to let that happen. That's that's unlikely. Uh, I also think that the American people are so sick of the whole thing. You know, Ford couldn't get reelected, right? So I think first of all, Pence will have had to commit. Uh, we'll, everybody will know that Pence will pardon Trump, and so uh, that's going to knock him out. And everything else, he's, there's so much on Pence. He knows everything. He was responsible and never got hit for, for all the Russia stuff. He was the, you know, the head of, of, of the Trump defense on that. And uh, so uh, I just don't think that the American people will, will be sympathetic with Pence either with his positions because he's been so supportive of Trump. Right. So do you agree with the uh, the Politico article today that uh, the campaign's basically screwed because this this really refocuses all of the issues on this campaign back to the virus? Yes. I think that's absolutely true. The only thing I'm thinking that could, where it could mark the, move the other way is if this is the biggest fraud in the history of mankind and Trump is, is, is pretending. I mean, he knows he's a losing dead duck. Maybe he thinks he's going to, in, in a matter of a week or two, come back and say, 
I'm healed. I'm better. Yep. And see, and then try to get the sympathy vote and think he's going to get it that way. But I don't think even that's going to work. But that's the only way, the only conspiracy that I think he's a TV re- real, you know, reality show person to the to the end. And this could be the ultimate reality performance. No, no, and that was right where my thought went. You know, he, he's going to take a couple of days, maybe a week, and he's going to walk through it. Say, hey, I wa- I, I went through it. It wasn't a big deal. Hydroxychloroquine, yeah. uh, and the, and and that's uh, or now this this you know, this magical experimental drug that they're getting. Yeah, the one that actually does do a little bit of good. I, I watched Rachel tonight, and it has, you know, it, it cuts your time in, in of of how much hospitalization in half it, it cuts the, the seriousness in half uh in in the 275 people that were tested with it and uh it does seem promising yeah at least it isn't hydroxychloroquine that yeah, but here's taking, the thing and it Bob. isn't remdesivir and it, it isn't the other it isn't the, the you know the plasma and, and the remdesivir actually does work steroids there are some things that work sure. that medical science says work a little bit yeah but so d- maybe d- this is one of them and maybe it'll help them yeah 275 people was tested on are you gonna, gonna right. really you know, jump right to the experimental drug on the most powerful person in the in the world and uh, give them the maximum dose yeah i i'm struggling with which that. Is what they did i'm struggling so with that's the... what tells everybody and it told zeke manual this thing is more serious than anybody is letting on exactly. in his case exactly uh, it just it just is what it is. But Bob, I appreciate the time as always. Uh, love your insight. Thanks so much, man. It's great, Rick. Take care. Thank you very much. Good stuff. Bye. Our good friend Bob Weiner, uh, Robert Weiner and Associates. Make sure you check out the work that they do.